Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nettling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to bring topics and guests that will empower you to become that confident leader and take your business and your life to the next level. Today, I am very excited to have as my guest, Nina Pandey. And let me tell you about her. She is a serial entrepreneur and has bootstrapped and successfully scaled two companies, Indie Roots, which is her lifestyle brand that grew to more than 1 million annual sales in less than two years without any marketing experience or expense. My education or excuse me, Nina's education business club Z tutoring was America's face fastest growing franchise in the space in just under a year of operation. She has a track record of creating impact and building revenue, generating businesses along the way and recently launched her fashion brand, String Code, that's creating waves since its launch. Before she took the plunge into entrepreneurship, she was a marketing executive in the Silicon Valley. And during that tenure at the technology company, she achieved consistent records of driving market impact, revenue delivery, and customer delight. Today, though, we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that is branding and appearance and why it is important to your success. Please join me in welcoming welcoming my guest, Nina Pandey. Nina, it is truly one of the things that (laughs) I think people overlook, and especially now in this kind of world where we... um, have had less time in the environments of formal environments, you know, people with just their pajama bottoms and and Mm -hmm. flip-flops and things like that. I think they sometimes forget about the first impressions. But before we get into the hard questions and all the meat of this, I'd love for you to just let everybody know, where do you call home? Where do you live now? Hi, Vicky. Hi, everyone. So, so glad to be here. You're an amazing host, Vicky. And I am tuning in from San Francisco Bay Area. I live in Milpitas. Oh, very nice. I love San Francisco area. All right. Well, we gave all those accolades of business-wise, but I always like to try to dig a little bit deeper and say, okay, you had a journey that took you from, you know, getting out of high school to where you are today. And I know it, it may be um, a eventful journey, but if you could just briefly tell us, what was it like that led you to where you are today, doing what you're doing today? Yeah, so uh, just a little bit about my background. So I grew up in India and um, you know I went to a fashion school And I did my master's from there. I was, you know, did my undergrad in chemistry and then master's in uh, in basically an MBA program specifically uh, targeted towards retail. And then I came to the US, I did my MBA and I have been, you know, working in technology for, you know, I've been a marketing executive for 16 years. And then I decided to take my plunge in entrepreneurship and I haven't looked back since then. (laughs) So what really drove me was, you know, the values I had growing up, you know, I mean, failure was not an option for me. I wanted to create a mark in this world. Yeah. And I have had many challenges when growing up and even, you know, after coming here and we can talk more about them. But I think the one thing which kept me going is the fact that failure is not an option for me. Yeah. 
I think that's, you know, one of the things that builds our resilience too. That yes, okay, I got knocked down, but I'm going to get back up. And how how can I do that? You know, and so I think that's a great testament to what you've achieved in your life. Exactly. And, uh, you know, my family values. Uh, so we grew up, we were three sisters. And, you know, growing up in a place in a middle class family in India, we were always reminded by our parents that, you know, staying in out of the workforce is not an option. Mm -hmm. So at the time growing in India, there were many women who would, you know, just think that, okay, you know, they will get married, they would be housewives, but then not being on our own foot was not an option for us. So yeah. the values and, you know, persistence, I am a spiritual person and I grew up with, you know, uh, there's one scripture in Indian, uh, uh, you know, uh, mythology, it's called Gita. And that interestingly, that teaches a lot of concepts around life, around business, around entrepreneurship. Mm. And, it, I hold it very close to my heart. So, you know, all those values, as you rightly said, that, you know, somebody fails, they, you know, and the life stops that that's not the case for me. I have failed mm -hmm. multiple times, but I always, I sulked for a day, but I always picked myself up and I was ready for the next day. Awesome. So you talked about how you took that plunge from the corporate <laughs> world, same as I did at but I mm -hmm. retired and you, you <laughs> took it with more years ahead of you than I have. But um, what was it like, though, changing your mindset from being in that corporate environment to now being your own boss, being accountable to yourself? You know, now you have to be the boss of you. <laughs> so talk to me about how that has um, changed. And, and really, if we could tie it back to your brand. And when we talk about appearance, appearance isn't only how you look, but it's how you show up. So talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah. And it's, it's a very interesting question. Uh, because I'll just, you know, talk a little about the brand first, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go in detail. So the origin of string code. So when I left my job, I have done three companies, my education brand, as you mentioned, it was America's mm -hmm. fastest growing franchise in year one, and then my home decor brand, and then my fashion brand. So my fashion apparel brand was, has been very, very close to my heart. And the reason was I, you know, I was working in a male dominated industry yeah, yeah and i don't have a technical degree myself so you know i have really struggled a lot rising through the you know corporate mm -hmm. chain and competing with people who all have technical degree and i was doing marketing which includes product marketing and product marketing is about product it's not only about brand and you right. know operations and uh, campaign marketing. So it's it was required of me to also know technology. And most of my people were male and, you know, they would. So cut a long story short, I have, I made my mark and have, you know, grown through the ranks in a highly competitive and a male dominated industry. Yeah. And when I was working, then uh, I just, you know, dress up the way I want to. And Silicon Valley, uh, is a little different in terms of fashion, right? I mean, it's yes, not it as, you, you know, right? <laughs> yes, so, I do. So it's it's not as fashion forward as say New York, right? So people That's dress right. with, you know, some uh, reservations. So I was, you know, you know, here I was, I was, you know, a brown woman and, you know, I was dressing up the way I, that I wanted to because I wanted to be myself. To yeah. step into my shoes and to be own my superpower, I had to do what I, you know, what made mm -hmm. me comfortable. So, and the inception of my fashion brand was because I didn't see a lot of fashionable clothing for working women. So it's like, you know, even if you're wearing suits, same color and, you know, I, mm -hmm. I just didn't find that there were a lot of option. So that was, you know, the inception of my fashion brand string code. Although, you know, the brand changed and, you know, basically we, uh, we pivoted, but then that was really, you know, what, what, uh, I mean, you prompted me to go and create a fashion brand in the first place. It's, it's very, I mean, you, you talk about 
you know, uh, corporate to entrepreneur and the mindset. I think it's it's very interesting because even when I was working, I was working extremely hard. I was, you know, putting in 18 hours a day. I was, mm -hmm. you know, I was heading the marketing team for a startup. And then, you know, that has, has a lot of work and I was always yeah. working. But when you step into entrepreneurship, I think, you know, it's a totally different ballgame altogether, right? Because uh, I would not say stakes are high, but then stakes are high in both the places. And I always treated my job, you know, with full devotion, with, with full accountability. Mm -hmm. But then when you are doing your own thing, then suddenly you you no longer have the luxury of having a team and you know especially when you're starting mm -hmm. out so yeah. it's everything is on you all mm -hmm. the you know revenue numbers your profit your loss every little thing is is your own i mean and you know if you take good decision it directly impacts you if you take bad it directly impacts you so i think that mindset of following your passion and you know doing what it takes it's very important when you are following the entrepreneurship path, because, you know, if you can understand Silicon Valley, it's so expensive, right? And suddenly yeah. you leave that cushiony job and you start your own company. And then in the beginning, there are struggles and then there are failures and then you quit. So if you do that, uh, you know, I was actually having a talk uh, recently and I was mentioning that 90% of the startups fail in their first eight years, eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. And one of the reason is that people, you know, don't pursue things to the end yeah. because say if you're out of your job, if you're doing something for one year, two year, you're not generating money, you are not, you know, you're very stressed, you're working 20 hours and then you're like, you know what, it's not for me. And you have a couple of failures and you quit. So I think, and I teach, I'm also a coach. So I have been, you know, a startup coach. I have been a part of many startup accelerators and a CEO coach. And now I started my own group tutoring. So I think I start everything with mindset. Because if yeah. you don't have entrepreneurial mindset, then uh, nothing matters. Yeah. So I think you asked a very important question right in the beginning that, from corporate to entrepreneurship, it's a totally mindset. It, mm -hmm. It's a total mindset game. I would it say. is. It is. And, you know, the first time I was really introduced to entrepreneurship was franchises. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my, my two jobs at, at corporate that I had, my two companies I worked with both had franchisees. Mm -hmm. And so in both instances, that the franchisees were always told the first two to five years, you're not going to be bringing home a profit. You're going to be paying your employees. You're going to be paying mm -hmm. your expenses. So don't it, set that expectation. And so for me, whenever I went into this, it, it's always, that's always been in my mind and you tend to not panic as much um, and give up, you know? Um, but I think, it is having that right mindset that keeps you positive, that keeps you going and understanding that um, with every failure, with every bump in the road, it's a lesson to be learned. And how do you pivot? How do you change? And so I thought it was great that you talked about pivoting with this business that uh, your fashion business that you saw it, you started it, but you didn't fall on the sword. You knew when you had to pivot. And I thought that was a really good thing to bring up. No, that is that that is actually uh, the key to building an empire. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't really know what is good for you, right? You have a passion and you're following it. But I, my first company, my education company, it was doing well, but then somehow I felt that I did not, you know, I cannot do that on a long-term basis mm -hmm. because I was the bottleneck. It was a services business. I was closing 99% of deals, but everybody wanted a piece of me. So I'm mm -hmm. like, this is not a scalable business. So I then, you know, created teams and I put that business in autopilot. So I, you know, I, I mean, it, it's running without me, Perfect. but then that was a failure, but that gave me an opportunity to go and create another company. Right. So, Mm -hmm. You don't know what's right for you until you get in there and until you, you know, do your best. So when we start our business, our company, our startup or whatever, and 
we think of the product or service we're going to do. We think of uh, all of the the things that we need to maybe set up the business. But I think oftentimes we really fail to think about, you know, what is what is the brand? How is it tied to my core values? So that people, when they purchase this, mm -hmm. they understand, uh, you know, those things. And so talk about why some brands survive and, and some brands don't in this very competitive market that we have. Right. Yeah, I think you uh, you hit it right there. It's so, I mean, we see so many success stories, yeah. but we also see so, I mean, so many brands that fail, right? So I think in this age and time, uh, I would say that, you know, there is no bad business because, you know, some people say that, okay, this place is overly saturated and, you know, don't go into oh, this. Yeah. And, but if you see companies you know they have uh, they have gone into a highly competitive market and they have created a brand for themselves mm -hmm. right i mean for example uh, i i just you know like to talk about these big uh, you know mobile players right verizon at&t so it's such a huge i mean basically they are they have empire and it's mm -hmm. so competitive market but in this you know there is another brand uh, that you know co comes in so basically during covid uh we always had outages and you know people always complained so there is another internet company that you know that came up and it's basically leveraged at and and verizon's internet but it started offering uh services to people and that had you know a 99 95 percent uptime rate and now you know that company in, in at least it was a local company but in my uh, neighborhood almost 80% of people have switched from Verizon and AT&T mm -hmm. to that company. Same with Ring Mobile, right? I mean, you mm -hmm. have Verizon, AT&T, but then Ring Mobile came in, they capitalized, they found an opportunity, they provided low cost, 10 to $15 service. And and it's it's starting, you know, to capture a lot of that teen market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and people brands, people even differentiate with, with water, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just amazing how creative companies can get and they can survive in an overly saturated marketplace so i feel that to be able to you know be successful in any business i just feel that it's so important it's so important to follow what your core values are and mm -hmm. to stay true to yourself yeah Right. I mean, you won't you don't want to be doing something just because there's an opportunity in that market and, you know, you you may be able to make some quick money. And so, I mean, and then that becomes, uh, you know, what the truth is. Right. I mean, you go there, you make some quick money. And so p companies who uh, scalable companies, sustainable companies who are, you know, who are around for multiple tens, 20, 30 years, they are built around core values. Mm -hmm. So, for yeah. example, even uh, apparel. So, I mean, I'll just talk a little about my brand, Indie Roots. Uh, Indie Roots is an artisan collective. So we bring handmade items from around the world. I started off with India and now, you know, I source from many Southeast Asian mm -hmm. countries. And these are the people, you know, these artisans, they make these stuff. So, you know, you see... Uh, uh, things uh, home decor items right like yeah. coffee table decor kitchen decor wall decor rugs so i'm talking about those items yeah. and uh, so you know the artisans they handmade it so right from you know say if it's a wooden item right from the time the wood is cut to you know they they uh, carve the wood to i mean everything it's done by hand and we work with around 500 artisan groups yeah. across you know the southeast asian continent and the the inspiration, what keeps me going in, in that business, the reason why I started that business is first, you know, of course, you know, I am I, I love art, I love culture. But at the same time, you know, it is uh, this brand speaks about sustainability, right? Yeah. In this world where, you know, we have so much of waste and we are just overloading you know everyone and with, with the products yeah. and if you see the deliveries and if you return something that goes to waste so there's so much of wastage and here there is a sustainable company which is bringing art and culture from around the world 
everything is handmade so i mean when i got my first i got my first shipment for sample and it came to my garage and i had goosebumps because it's like you know the skill level of these people yeah. uh, such beautiful products and those are handcrafted so it, i also you know it, it also speaks about what you are leaving for your kids right what kind yeah. of earth so you are you know uh, these are the you you're keeping heritage alive you're giving mm -hmm. livelihood to these people so we yes. also have medical camps and you know we give them fair wages and we give them different incentives so uh take care of women's education in in, mm. in these uh you know villages where, where where they make stuff so it's it's very personal to me because i'm empowering women i'm giving yes. people a fair wage i'm keeping yeah. an ancient heritage alive and i am also making world more more sustainable i am leaving yeah. a good you know a sustainable earth behind for my children yeah so that's that's very very personal to me and you know that's so important that we lend a hand to those that need it you know and make awareness you have a bigger platform than any of them singly but collectively you give them that platform to be able to share their gifts and so i think no, that's absolutely. really commendable yeah and i also wanted to take a minute and talk about string code i have you know uh, i have always wanted to start my uh, women's wear brand uh, my clothing brand mm -hmm. but i have other businesses and you know i could I, and it's a very very competitive marketplace you know yes. it's a designer brand very capital intensive and very competitive but what uh, you know why i created string code and what differentiates string code is again my core values because i you know being i i grew up in india and you know i worked in male dominated industries and so i have had my own share of struggle which uh, you know and and i want women and and i really want to help women and empower them and you know uh, make them you know step into their superpower and so on so with string code my reason behind starting the brand was you know and i i think this uh, ties into another question of yours how would looks you know how why are they important right so yes looks are superficial i totally agree with that but those are the first impressions that that you know yeah. that you carry right so when you walk into and it's not about others for me it's not at all about others so exactly. when i am looking beautiful when i am looking confident then the next step i take that will be full of my confidence and i will always do better right yeah. so when i was working my corporate job i would walk into a boardroom and if all eyes would turn to me and i know that i am looking good i am looking beautiful i am feeling confident mm -hmm. in the next presentation i give i i'll just nail it just because i have that confidence in me because of how i look beauty and looks is not for others it's for your own self i mean Absolutely. i love presenting i love showing up i love presenting my best self and i feel confident if if you know if i am looking good right mm -hmm. and as you mentioned early on it, it's the first impression right so i mean yeah. if you uh, people the first thing people see is you and then they get to know about your qualities about your heart about everything else right so it doesn't matter after but then if you have 2 seconds right then that is something which you carry how you show up that becomes extremely important and, and so, that is so true yeah exactly and you know just uh, i was talking about women empowerment it, it, it's very close to my heart so my brand string code is also one of the biggest uh, you know something which inspires me is being able to empower women which is why we have also created a charity it's called it's okay mm. so during covid so it's called you know it's okay movement uh, so during covid uh, you know we all we have seen that mental health uh, you know uh, problems are on a rise yes. because mm -hmm. people were you know they were this they were stuck in their homes for one or two years and then so many things changed it's not only about people but people saw you know <sighs> i mean it it was a very bad time in in terms of people lost their loved ones and there were so many mm -hmm. bad things happen so and we feel that lot of people are going through the same challenges mm -hmm. but people feel that uh, you know it's not okay to come out 
right mm-hmm. so here we are telling women we are telling people that hey it's okay to be depressed it's okay to not want to get out of your house it's okay to be a gay it's it's okay to it's just okay to be who who you are it's okay to be mm-hmm. anorexic it's 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 okay because we have all been there right and with my fashion movement you know there's a lot of uh, with the you know with uh, social media and a lot of impact of social media everyone wants to have their best bodies and you know look perfectly mm-hmm. awesome but then people don't realize that e- even people with even models with the best bodies they you know they feel that challenged issues. they are struggling mm-hmm. with something so this is for me being in the fashion world i can actually have a bigger impact by having these people come out and talk about their own challenges so people feel that you know some of my models they have they have challenges and you know they are not happy with their bodies and people will think that okay you know these yeah. these you know models they 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 are so beautiful but everyone has their own set of challenges and which is why we are trying to tell people it's okay to be who you are and everyone has challenges lot of people yeah. but just they just don't come out good 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 way to uh sort of end this it time has flown by and i definitely need to have you back so we can chat a little bit more about you know each of your brands and right. and definitely <laughs> talk more about your charity um i think that there was a lot of great tips shared today and mm-hmm. wonderful insight and if you my dear audience agreed with that i encourage you to um be able to take a screenshot of the confirm of the information that's going to be on this slide. And for those that are just listening, that website is the stringcode.com. Again, the stringcode.com. On Facebook, LinkedIn, she's Neela Pandey. That's P-A-N-D-E-Y. So Nina Pandey. And Instagram is I am Nina Pandey. I'm going to let Nina talk to you just briefly about what you can find on her website. And that will give you some time to um, get that screenshot. Go ahead. Nina. Right. Yes, absolutely. So website, the stringcode.com is my fashion brand as my clothing brand. Uh, Facebook is my personal profile. LinkedIn, also my personal profile. Instagram is also my personal profile. And uh, this build, scale, sustain, as I was mentioning early on, that I have been a startup coach uh, for a while. Uh, I have coached many startups and, and CEOs. And now I am trying to take it to a wider audience. So I have started my group coaching on how to build and sustain a profitable business. And uh, that website is buildscalesustain.com. Uh, I am, I hold challenges a couple of times a year. So basically it's a workshop, free workshop, five day workshop that, you know, that talks about everything you want to know about building your own business. And the next challenge is on April 11th. So that Monday following April 8th. And uh, this is the link to uh, to be a part of that that challenge. If you want to, if you want to get out of your nine, nine to five or whatever limitation you have, and you want to create your own business, and I'm sorry, the dates were wrong. It's April fifteenth uh, is when I have my five day challenge, and I would love for you to you know to, be, to step out of your zone and take the first step towards building your own business. Excellent. Well, Nina, it's just been great chatting with you. You gave such wonderful information and I just applaud everything that you're doing and uh, wish you all the best. And as always, I remind everyone that life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Nettling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nettling where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.